Hello, welcome to AAU Talks on AAU TV. I am your host, Georgina Mason. Our topic for today is academic corruption in Africa's higher education. Our guest today is a, is a lecturer at the University of Professional Studies, Accra, and he is the immediate past Secretary General of the All African Students Union, ASU. Welcome, Mr. Fred Awal. Thank you very much. Mr. Awal, during AAU's ninth international conference on quality assurance in higher education, you presented a paper. Could you please tell me what the theme of the paper was? Well, I had the responsibility of looking at uh, Kevin student-related academic corruption in Africa, uh, best practices from Ghana, models in Ghana that have helped reduce the canker, uh, which can be shared throughout Africa so that we can collectively fight the issue. Mr. Wow, what is academic corruption? Well, academic corruption takes diverse forms, but I in this discussion, we we'll look, want to look at the works of uh, Okebukola 2016. He says that academic corruption is a type of cheating that accords a person undue advantage over others in an academic enterprise. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, in my own works in 2017, I posited that uh, academic corruption has to do with everything that happens in regular corruption that has been brought into an academic setting. Okay. So perhaps there is the need for me to elaborate. Okay. Now, in the secular world, people who may want a contract and do not have the requisite documentation sometimes would forge what? Documents, documents in order to get contracts. And that is a corrupt practice. Very corrupt. Now, and this has been borrowed into the traditional academic setting where students who want to get into universities and do not have the requisite requirements falsify their academic documents in order to be able to what? Get, get into, into the university. university. So that is a typical example of how secular corruption has been borrowed into what? The academic, academic world. Sector. Okay, so there are so many forms that uh, academic corruption can take. One of the issues, uh, one of those cited is the issues of falsification of entry uh, re results. There's also the issue of plagiarism, where an individual borrows the works of another but does not cite or does not acknowledge that the work that has been picked does not tra traditionally belong to me, mm -hmm. but that I borrowed it from Ifwa or Mensa or another. That also constitutes academic corruption. Now, there is a current trend on the campuses of many African countries, which looks normal, but obviously is not normal. That is the issue of thesis contractors, mm -hmm. where you have individuals having posters or banners indicating that students who want their thesis or dissertations written for them can be done at a fee. So if you are a student, a graduating student, and it's the requirement that you write a thesis, and you are unable to do it, you can see a third party who will do it for you at a fee. All right. So the thesis bears your name, but, but uh, in reality, you don't understand the content of that thesis. Mm -hmm. That is yet another form of what? Academic, Academic corruption. Academic corruption. Yeah. So I can go on and on and on. There are incidences of uh, exam cheatings or exam or practices where one person writes for another. It is academic corruption. There are instances where you are in a class and one opens his script so that a third party copies. That is also academic corruption. Now, we have lecturers, people like me, mm -hmm. all right, who also sometimes award marks that are not supposed to be awarded for some gains, including sex and money. They constitute academic corruption. So anything that is unethical within an academic environment falls directly under academic, academic corruption. corruption. So I heard you mention the students and lecturers as parts, as people who play a part in academic corruption. Would you say the institution also plays a part in it? Well, when you say the institution, the institution is a, collect, a, a collection of students 
and lecturers, okay, mm -hmm. so that if there are reported cases of grade buying, mm -hmm. meaning that traditionally maybe you should get a, a third class, mm -hmm. but things have been machinated to give you a first class from the institution. The institution is a collection of individuals. So it is a holistic thing that needs a holistic approach to care of it. Individuals, the organizational setup. There are institutions where individuals have connived with students or students have connived with management to alter their grades. So in all of such instances, you wouldn't want to say that it's just individuals or the institution, but a, collecti a collection of okay. both both factors. Okay. Would you say Africa has a very high rate of academic corruption? I will say so because a cursory examination of uh, internet sources reveals that almost on a daily basis there are reports of issues of corruption, academic corruption in one university or the other in Africa. It could be a student, could be a lecturer, could be an administrative staff and I can go on and on and on. I want to be specific. For instance, in the year 2016, it, it was reported that the University of Ghana, for instance, had 20 students wanting to alter their system in order to change their grades. Oh. Yeah. So in that instance, the University Authority had the Bureau of National Investigation pick up those students for interrogation. And uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, the case of the University of Ghana doesn't stand in isolation. In my own university, the University of Professional Studies Accra, in the same year, 2016, 22 students were dismissed. Mm. And their crime was that they tried altering our systems in order to change their grades. Mm -hmm. Similar reports were given of um, Wisconsin International University College. So. The prevalence of uh, academic corruption on our campuses is nothing new. It is something that is eating deep and until academics in Africa, working together with other stakeholders like the government, putting stringent measures to curb the canker, the effects would always be daring on the African community. So would you say that it is a culture in African institutions, well, it's something that has been inbred in us. We, are learn we learn this from even before we get to level 100 that, hey, if I get into school, or even to get into school, I have an uncle who is a minister. He could help me get in. Well, uh, uh, is something like that our culture in Africa? I don't think it's our culture. It's something new that is gradually keeping or breathing into our culture and it's likely to eat deep into the fabrics of the African culture. When we were younger, it wasn't too much of the issue of grades. It was so much of the issue of knowledge. For instance, if I met you, I wanted you to know that I knew my course area. Mm -hmm. So we debated on issues, and the basis of knowledge was what you said mm -hmm. with empirical evidence. Today, people do not debate any longer. When peers meet, it is not an issue of what Mr. Mm -hmm. A or Ms. B knows. It is the issue of who made an A. Are you getting mm -hmm. it? So the debate doesn't go beyond the content. It's rather, it's rather hinged on what? the certification. Yes. So I don't think that it's an African culture, but gradually it's eating into the fabrics of our culture. And the earlier we start trumpeting over it, the, the better. And I think that we should congrat congratulate the Association of African Universities because it was one of the key thematic areas of uh, last year's uh, Quality Assurance Series, the ninth edition of the International Quality Assurance in Higher Education in Africa. The Association of African University gave more room for the discussions on uh, the issue of academic corruption. That tells us that Africa is not sleeping over it and that measures are being taken to address the issues. Okay. So to address an issue, most of the time you have to go down to find the root cause of that issue. So once she gets the root out, the plant dies with it. What would you say are some of the factors that are promoting academic corruption in our institutions? <laughs> the first one is uh, certification rather than education. Mm -hmm. Times back, like I told you, people were more proud of the content of what they knew 
but now people just want the first classes. So in the quest of many students to get the first classes, they don't care about the contents. What they want is the grade. So in, in wanting to get the grade, they will cheat in examinations, they will plagiarize, they will do wrong citations, they would give money to contractors to write uh, theses for mm -hmm. them. So one of the issues that has brought us where we are today is the fact that a lot of people recognize certificates. They want to get the certificates rather than the knowledge. Now, the second is the issue of industry. Industry also uh, rewards people with certificates rather than knowledge. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is the case of Africa. And gradually, it's changing, but that has been the traditional norm. So that if you even apply for interviews, the first to be shortlisted are those with the first classes. Mm -hmm. So if I want to get a good job, I must get a first, first class. class. Uh, if I must get a first class, though I am deficient in the, co uh, the courses, I should find a way of what? Getting, getting the, the first, first class. class. And this is one of the key issues that has accounted for the issue of academic corruption within our environment. If you just joined us, this is AAU Talks on AAU TV, and I am your host, Georgina Mason. Our topic again is academic corruption as an ethical issue in Africa's higher education institutions. Our guest with us is Mr. Fred Awal. Mr. Awal, how has Africa suffered from academic corruption? Well, in diverse way my, ways, my sister, education and training is supposed to equip you with the skill, knowledge, and attitudes needed to solve practical what? Problems. Problems. So that if, for instance, Mr. A, doesn't have the skill, knowledge, and requisite attitude needed to be a doctor. Yet, through academic corruption, he becomes a doctor. It's obvious that l African lives would suffer. A lot of people would die just because somebody didn't go through due diligence before getting what? His degree. His degree. Now, take, for instance, what we call theses and dissertations. For a lot of African students and students elsewhere, the reasoning is that it's just a requirement for what? Getting Graduating. Yeah, absolutely. But that is not the case. Theses and dissertations are intended to solve real problems. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that if I do a thesis... The intention is that my thesis should be able to solve the problems of industry or a given sector of the economy. So that if I did not do the thesis and I paid somebody else to do it for me, reality is that my name bears, the, the thesis bears what, my, my Your what? Name. name. But in real sense, I am unable to what? To solve the, the problems, problems of society. So I think that uh, the issues of academic corruption are eating as deep down our bones. And we have a collective responsibility to look at how to curb it. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Do you think academic corruption is affecting the quality of African education in the sense that, uh, that would it mean that lecturers are not actually teaching the students in the ways easy ways for them to understand is that why they resort to academic corruption i don't n necessarily think so maybe i want to talk about it from two perspectives mm -hmm. from the perspective of a lecturer there are lecturers who do not cover up their syllabus for the semester that is academic corruption mm -hmm. there are lecturers who do not use the entire period that they are supposed to be using in the classroom that is academic corruption we have instances where uh, lecturers per in, perpe in perpetuity give classroom assignments just because they don't have time to be with yes. the students. That is what? Academic, Academic corruption. corruption. So we can lay some of the blames at the doorsteps of what? The, the lecturers. Lecture. However, students also have an equal responsibility towards themselves and their education. So that if you are a student and you do not come for lectures, and you only believe that when it's IA time, you would compose all of the issues that are needed into your mind and then come and deliver. Of course, that cannot be right. No. Students do not attend lectures. Others do not attend lectures on time. Students uh, 
think that um, in recent times, I think that students think that being in the universities is just fashionable <laughs> and they're actually not in the university because they really want to learn. They are there to make grades so that they, be, they can be called what? Graduates, graduates of a university. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged double issue. Okay. Uh, while students have their portion of the blame, we also want to put some part of uh, the blames on uh, the lecturers. The lecturers and sometimes accreditation bodies and then university authorities. Okay. So, with, um, as a graduate from an African institution, do you think my certificates would be recognized globally since you said there, there's a high rate of academic corruption in African institutions? Now, the reality is that the issue of academic corruption is not limited to Africa. Mm -hmm. It is a global issue, except that gradually it is creeping into what? Our Africa. system. So wherever you go, throughout the nooks and cranny of the world, whichever university it is, if they are sincere with you, they will, they will tell you that they have also registered what? Incidences of academic corruption. Mm -hmm. So that is not a starter to blackmail the African certificate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reality is that we have our challenges in, the in our higher education, and these challenges also what reflect in other jurisdictions across the world. Okay. So it has nothing to do with just Africa. It's a okay. global issue. Okay. So is it possible for us to completely get rid of academic corruption, or do you think there would still be tiny bits of it in our systems. Can we just reduce it or can we get rid of it completely? There are possibilities of reducing it and also curbing it. Now, there are best, some best practices with a few universities that I do know of. Take, for instance, the Asashi University. What they do is that they don't have invigilators in their exam halls for yes. students. What they have done is what they call the code of ethics. The students themselves have vowed that they will not what cheat. copy they will not cheat in examinations and that if they are found cheating they should be expelled from what the university mm -hmm. do you understand yes so it's a policy and i think it's the students themselves who originated that policy somewhere in 2008 okay. so if students consciously decide that we don't want to be corrupt academically it is one way of what curbing it okay. the second is lower university college at yes. nungwa in accra now, what Lawe does is that they encourage small classrooms when it comes to examinations. Apart from the issue of small classrooms, they have physical invigilators in what? The classroom. And they also have CCTV mm -hmm. cameras. So whichever way you want to look at it, you cannot cheat. That apart, you know why people plagiarize and give out theses to others to do is because they do not have the skill of writing what? Yes. So what Lawa University College has done is that right from first year level 100, you are introduced to academic writing. So by the time you get to level 400, you know that plagiarism is what? It's wrong. You know how to put your concepts together. You know mm -hmm. how to review literature. You know the right methodology to use in order to come out with what? Your findings. Mm -hmm. So in that vein, Academic corruption is nipped at the bad right at level what? 100. Level 100. So yes. there are a number of these models that are working in a number of African what? Universities. And I do think that if so many other African universities replicate these in their institutions, academic corruption gradually would be buried. If I understand you correctly, it means that the bedding is now on the institutions to curb academic corruption. Is there anything the African nations can do to help institutions to curb it? Well, largely African nations, uh, what they can do to curb it uh, perhaps is funding. Yes, if not for that, I think that largely is the responsibility of the institutions because um, the educational policies come from government, but there are institutional policies as well. So for instance, what penal measures does an institution prescribe for a student that cheats? That shouldn't come from government. The mm -hmm. handbook should say it. Mm -hmm. If you are caught cheating, this is what will what happen, will happen to you. To you. Rasti uh, they will, you either be rustified mm -hmm. or something. Are you getting it? Yes. So 
all of these are embedded in handbooks of the universities. The university. So I think largely, much as we always will want to call on government, I think largely the institutions have a bigger responsibility. So you, you were talking about cheating during exams. You know, people write on their thighs, on hankies and things, send them to exams hall. Culture like this starts mostly when you are younger, even before you get to the higher education institution. So, like, academic corruption cuts through from senior high to junior high. We all start learning how to cheat very early in life. Is there a way the higher education institution can get rid of that system which is in us? Well, I do think that everything has begins and ends with the mind. So take, for instance, the model that we talked about regarding Aseshi and Lawe. It is not as if the thing came out of a blue. There mm -hmm. were some initiatives by what? The Student. university authorities together with the students. Because they do know that this persists. It does exist within our systems. So if they do, then it means that there is the need for measures that would enable us to what? Solve it. Mm. Are you getting it? Yes. So getting the solution largely depends on the students and also depends on what? The, the institution. institutions. Take, for instance, a university that you, you find yourself in a classroom situation and then one is cheating. A, lot, a number of times, students do not even report their colleagues that are cheating to the invigilator. Mm. So if we make it a culture to report our colleagues that are cheating to the invigilator, mm -hmm. now, any time you want to cheat in an exam environment, you know that it's not only the invigilator who is watching you, but there are tendencies that your colleague would also what? Watch. Watch and report. So it's a cultural issue, and I agree with you that we need to collectively fight it. It is not for a single individual okay. to fight. Do you have any last words for our viewers? Well, I do think that uh, the issue of academic corruption needs a collective approach to be able to what? Solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, continental institutions such as the Association of African Universities have started. And the campaign was visible last year when one key session was ascribed to the issues of academic corruption on the face of the continent. Universities must take clue from it. Polytechnics must, must take clue from it. Uh, bodies like the West African Examination Council, uh, national accredi accreditation bodies across the continent. And then students should also be peer watchers of their colleagues. Mm -hmm. So that if you know that Ama Mansa is not doing her thesis, but she's outsourcing it, you should be able to find a way of what? Reporting to management. Okay. If Ama Mansa hasn't studied and she's in a classroom and she comes in with what? Foreign materials. Mm -hmm. Or she wears a long dress and then she <laughs> writes the issues on her laps yeah. only to unveil it whilst in the <laughs> exam. Somebody should tell the invigilator. Mm -hmm. So that if we are watch over ourselves, yeah. tendencies are that the fear of being reported alone can help us resolve the issues of academic okay. corruption. And also, I think industry must shift from this issue of awarding certificates rather than content. Mm -hmm. So that if I have first class, industry wants to pick me. Perhaps the first class was not a product of my. Uh, so they should, beyond the first class, there should be interrogations. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to AAU Talks on AAU TV. And I am your host, Georgina Mason. Our guest was Mr. Fred Awal. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Fred. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in.